Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Sid Jones, and we are here for Rocks TV Weekly, getting back from South by Southwest, more events coming up, and it's good to be here. We're doing this a little differently this week. Uh, expect to be seeing us at 420 every week. Some things have changed. South by Southwest may have changed our minds. It could have been some other things, but regardless, we are here. And we missed last week, but we hope you guys caught up with us for everything South by Southwest on YouTube. Bobby Rocks. How you doing? How you doing? Bobby Doe. Hello. Our special guest, I Bobby know. Doe. This is very random and uh, definitely unplanned, and thanks for inviting me, guys. I really appreciate it. I'm glad you're here, but I'm glad you left the chocolate milk outside. I know, I know. I have kale and chocolate milk. I kind of didn't know what kind of environment we were coming into. I thought it was going to be your basement, and yeah, it wasn't. Yeah, I usually only uh, bring other people down to the basement, not Bobby Doe. Not Bobby Doe. <laughs> If you no. think Bobby Doe would be used to being in the basement, right? Right. It happens. Before we get too Better far than in, in the closet like you. I want to oh. thank our sponsors. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's thank our sponsors for a minute. We got Party Masters out of Virginia. We've got Sem Carefree Foods in Detroit here, and uh, Seventh Dimension out of Georgia. Nice. So is that the dr what's the drink? Uh, the Seventh Dimension. The seven uh, they do Kratom and they do coffee. Yeah, my uh, my uh, son's mother uh, drank like two of those packages that you gave. Thanks, man. She really liked them and stuff. And hopefully uh, we can get some more from you and uh, get in contact with them so we can get something on. That would be awesome. So, yeah, I'm glad to have everyone here. Uh, yes, yeah, so I did get an update on... Uh, Razor Ray, he may not be joining us today, unfortunately. Oh, it's a hey, you know what? We we got we got three three people here that are ready to have fun. So like you know, what? our condolences, they won't be here. But uh, let's just have fun. Let's the it. show must go on. The show right? must go on, right, Bob? Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. So let's start off with our first uh, segment, the news from the underground. Ah, news from the underground. So I wanted to kick it back a little bit because there were some underground acts that we saw, some of the best underground acts, and it was actually thanks to. Uh, Broken Blanket Productions, and they were also connections through uh, Team Money, so a huge shout out to them uh, for bringing these artists out. But underground artists that we got to see, uh, Pleasure Fix was a was a big one, so we got to see them. But let's talk about the Insane Clown Posse thing for a minute. Whoop, whoop. Uh, we got to see the Insane Clown Posse acoustic set, and I was really excited that they did this again. And I know a lot of people were thinking, it's, it's stale, it was supposed to be only for balls, and I'm thinking, but it was successful. At balls, everybody loved it. Of course, they'd want to venture out and branch out and see what other people thought about. I it. heard when they did the first acoustic set, they actually said they might make it into a tour. So, which would be dope, by the way. They're actually going to do it at the gathering. They uh, announced the set that they're actually doing it at the gathering. So ninjas that didn't get to see it in Texas or ballers, uh, they get a chance to go see it at the gathering and stuff when they go. Yeah, I think that's going to be phenomenal, and especially something for the gathering. Uh, Super gathering, 20 years, man, they've been going strong. You for know? the gathering, yeah. Well, it's like I'm looking forward to it. Uh, a lot of underground acts are going to be uh, submitting their uh, their things. Actually, a lot, I know a lot of people already emailed uh, getting ready for the contest for uh, on Psychopathic TV. Oh, that's great. I'm looking forward to it. Um, but one of the other things I'm going to talk about with South by Southwest was some of the other acts that we had seen. Like, we got to interview DJ Clay, which was amazing. We got to hang out with the Juggalos, which we missed, by the way. We DJ were, Carlito. Yeah. Do, I, why do I keep doing that? I keep you know doing what? that. You're not even the only one because it's actually kind of like an almost an ongoing joke in the underground. Like, I've, I've seen people go up to DJ Clay and was like, what up, DJ Carlito? And it's just, it's, it's, it's funny and stuff. I mean, they're both DJs. They both look very similar to each other and stuff. Actually, Carlito looks exactly right, but they're like not related. When he was, correct? No, 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 no. Right. But uh, Carlito looks exactly like his father when he was that age. Like, it's crazy. You watch old school like JCW stuff, and like it's like, oh my God, it's Carlito in the ring, but not. There was so much more to South by Southwest, though. Uh, I was just really impressed. They they, they turned a whole city into a giant party. You're you're talking venues. There's. I don't know, at least 15 venues on like every block with just tons of different concerts. And we're talking multi-genre and, you know, some of it's electronic, some of it's hip hop, oh, a lot of rock, some folk. Um, Punk rock. I, it's like literally the who's who of the underground and mainstream. It's crazy. That's awesome. Like music will, you know, that's what music does though. It's, music brings everybody together and starting like the mainstream is starting to see the underground artists, you know, they're not, you know, they're not 
just you know somebody else you know they're seeing they're like these cats are really hustling too and stuff and they're mixing in doing shows and stuff like that with them and stuff like i mean what 15 years ago dude like you know could you ever see like uh you know uh Yellow Wolf doing, uh, I mean, Yellow Wolf was around, but an artist, that statue doing, like, a small tour with whiskey. You know, just that venue with, like, two, three hundred people or something like that. So to see mainstream artists, like, come down, you know, and hang out with uh, the un more underground artists, artists and stuff, stuff like this is always good and stuff, and, you know, link up and stuff. It's almost like drafting day for them. You know, they see, they get to see, you know, you, you go in there, you bring your A game, and you might impress somebody. We got to uh, hook up with Bushwick Bill down That's there. I seen that. That's I was jealous of you guys the whole time out there. I was seeing it. I was like, oh my god, this is amazing. And we met Jam Master Jay's son. Mind blowing. That's... Like Jam Master Jay was the DJ for Run DMC. Yeah, yeah. You know? it's the first hip hop group I ever listened to. Right. Like, shit. I mean, uh, and uh, Paul Wall. Yeah, we did see Paul Wall. How that was... was that talking to Paul Wall, man. That was a great interview, and it was, and it was. It was mind blowing that he was playing at a place like that with the stature of Paul Wall, but that's exactly what South by Southwest was. It it, it was you could have been a small band you never heard of, big name arts, but they're still playing at the same capacity. That's awesome. You know, that's and amazing. and some of it's like uh, it's a it's a South by Southwest showcase. So you do need either to pay to get in or you do need your pass. But the Paul Wall thing, walk right in. Yeah, so, of course it's Paul Wall. He just shows his grill like. Right, and and, <laughs> and it, one of the things I really appreciated though about South by Southwest was all the different things that we got to see and witness. DJs, punk rock bands, just playing at like two o'clock in the morning. Yeah, DJ Dankness, man, I watched a bunch of your videos and stuff like that. Oh, oh Dankish killed it! It killed it, man. At every time, man. And every I do time gotta thank him. He was the plug on Bushwick Bill. Was you know, he? He uh, he's uh, put cuts up on. Um, is young now young now yeah uh, bushwick's son young now is a rapper okay. and uh jr has put cuts all over his shit and uh so that's how we uh hooked up with bushwick bill down there nice. but i gotta give shouts you know like you said i can't believe jr didn't have his grill in when he met paul wall <laughs> I, t I that's the first thing i i said to him i was like why didn't you have your grill he's like i left it at home i was like I'm never gonna let you live that. Time. You met Paul Wall, pretty much the king of grills. Can can we can we all agree up on that? Yeah, like, I I mean, he's a dentist. He like you know he does he's it. He's a got a dentist. Whole, he, yeah, that's what he started out as as a dentist. At least that's what I heard. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that's true though. And then after you know he got famous and he started doing grills for people, like he makes ton of money. So like to for R to always wear a fucking grill and meet the grill god, yeah, it was kind of sad. But I love art, man. Thanks, thanks, thanks to the homie. He killed it man. down there in uh, South by Southwest. He played. Oh yeah, quite he, a few venues. Dude, and he, he murders it, man. Every he time. actually went out this weekend and uh, DJed for Extra Overdose. Oh yeah, I heard about that oh, over on the the Twisted. Uh, fuck, w Wicked. Wicked tour. Yeah, the Wicked uh, ten year anniversary, which is kind of crazy. My daughter's ten. So like, I took my uh, daughter's mother to go see Wicked while she was still pregnant. It was like she was. She just, uh, yeah, she hadn't had her yet. She was, she was pregnant, nine months. We're watching Waking in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Heck yeah, so why didn't you go to the 10-year uh, anniversary? Money. Yeah. Yeah. I feel you. You were too busy eating a $38 steak with me. I did eat it. It's so good. <laughs> it was so good. <laughs> it's basically, I think I probably, yeah, I spent more on the steak than I would on a ticket, but I was more satisfied by the steak. Uh, speaking of DJ Dankish, Art of War Friday. Uh, yeah, dude, I, I heard about that show because I'm helping with if it. If you guys are uh, in the Toledo area, you need to go to uh, Art of War show. Where's the venue at? Oh, man, uh, I'm a piece of shit. I should know that because I'm tagged in like 900. I had, it's uh, the Longhorn, right? Correct. Uh, but the show is Trey Pounds. Uh, yeah, Shout Trey out. Pounds, Extra Overdose. Casper. Two tone, um, I believe Madhouse is on it. Yeah, I've got no internet on down here, so yeah, you guys gotta look for the flyer. Um, I should have taken a picture of it. T Jax is hosting with me, I think. A gentleman named T Jax. Yeah, I guess you had mentioned somebody else is gonna be there hosting as well. Uh, Johnny Footsteps, Footsteps. from Hell's Kitchen. So. 
I gotta ask you guys, would you, would you, th- I don't know if you were there, Bobby Doe. I'm really bad at it. It's at possibly, I probably was, or maybe um, not. It's, yeah, it's at the Longhorn Saloon, there we go. Toledo, Ohio. Extra overdose, uh, C5, uh, THC, six digit, no, th- gonna be there. and Alaz, um, two tone, uh, Bobby H2O. Uh, Madhouse, Casper, Takova, Takova, uh, he reps it with uh, the Last American Rock Stars, Bizarre and King Gordy, so that's going to be great to see. He's actually Bizarre's hype man. Yeah. I thought Fury was. Fury mm-hmm. is one of them, but uh, when he's not there, Takova's there. <laughs> anyway, who else? Um, that's... That's it? That's well, it. hey, that's going to be a great show. I'm looking forward to it. It seems like it's a bunch of headliners, man, because if you haven't heard Takova's music yet, oh, man, that dude kills it in the studio. I not- have. I I went out to New Jersey with uh, Trilogy. I was on the Warp Tour. I was helping out Trilogy, and I believe he was with Fury at one of one or two stops. I think it might have been two, but I had watched uh, him and Fury and stuff throw it down and stuff. So, yeah, the guy's definitely fucking amazing. Yeah, shout out to Fury. He's throwing together uh, Lethal Weekends 3 this year. It's going to be out in New Hampshire. Uh, My home state. Rock TV really? got invited. He'll have uh, Last American Rock Stars there. And uh, I want to say... I don't even want to say any of their artists because I don't know. But that's, I, that's confirmed. The yeah. Last American Rock Stars is confirmed? Yeah. Man, I was there last year. It was a good show. I had a good time. I, I just want to go because I heard there's really good seafood at the venue. Yes, there is. And if you're not happy with the seafood down at the venue, like go seafood. across the street. Lobster, shrimp, crab, the whole nine, man. Right. Off, and here's the thing. You go to that venue, Hampton Beach, New Hampshire, it's cloud nine. You look out the window. The beach is right there. So look out that window right there. Whatever you're seeing is probably about the same distance as the ocean. Are you going to give me a ride, Sid? I'm riding with this guy. So you're going to give me a ride, Bob? Ooh. Are you going to sit close to me? Of course. It usually big gets, spoon. It usually gets really close in that van. <laughs> like, really, really close. It's the Rocks TV mobile. Don't call it that van. You yeah, just, look at that. Show some love. Was the Ghostbuster car just the Ghostbuster car? Or, like, just some it car? It was just some old just some, just some Cadillac we have. God, Sid. I don't know. Compassion. Hey, the mystery van was a van. So did you guys hear uh, Tech Nine died? I know. Yes. Rest in peace. The battle rapper. The better rapper. It caused all kinds of fucking controversy. Uh, Tech Nine uh, from Strange Music confirmed that uh, it was him that was dead. That was <laughs> that was a funny post where he's and people believed it. They're like R.I.P. I'm like, look, listen, he can't confirm he's dead unless he's alive. Yes, the Tech Nine from Kansas City, Missouri, is quite alive, and the Tech Nine that died was a battle rapper. Uh, Philly. less known, but Philly, still known yeah. well. 35 years old, man. 35 I'm, years old. I'm 35. That's fucking horrible. Man, you gotta think, we outlive some of the biggest names, you know what I mean? Pac and Biggie. Yeah. That's, like, that's terrifying to think about, and, and they haven't, like, discussed, like, how he's gone yet, like, how he, you know, departed from this planet. Uh, as far as when I wrote the article on rockstv.com, which you guys should check out uh, for more information on the things that we've discussed, by the way. Um, but when I was when I was reading this, yeah, 35 years old, they hadn't confirmed how he had died. But I mean, could we discuss like kind of like the violence a little bit in hip hop that, you know, it, it, it seems like there's more violence in hip hop than other genres. And maybe Tech 9 had quite possibly got being a battle rapper. God smack beef with uh, who the fuck is it? Nikki Six, I think. That's the only there, rock. There a lot of rock that, beef that's or? the only one that I can think of offhand. And then, I, I guess they're on tour again. They squash their beef. But Rob Zombie and uh, Marilyn Manson had a big thing the last time. The last tour that they now went they're on touring together. and being buds. And right. I want. I want to go see them. I really do. They did a tour so last year too. Give me together, by the way. Now I've seen Marilyn Manson like eight times, but I've never seen the fat Marilyn Manson. I've and never I seen see Marilyn Manson ever. I liked him in '99, and then a family member went to Vegas and. Like, Twiggy was uh, at some random bar, like, randomly. And she's got no reason to lie, like, especially about something like that. She's like, yeah, I talked to him and kind of just blasted Marilyn Manson. And just kinda, I just kind of got that from when I was 16 years old up, and I was just like, yeah, I'm not a fan, really. You know, speak- I mean, I'm not going to say he's not musically talented in his day. You know, he's very creative, very artsy. Uh, the Alice Cooper of, you know, the 90s and, or the late 90s in a sense, you know, even though Alice Cooper's, you know, God. 
or say Alice Cooper is uh he's amazing yeah. I love Alice Cooper is he broke walls down and just a lot of the stage stuff that we see today is because of Alice Cooper kiss and he's practically a magician and a rock star at the same time he I'd watch him of... if he had just a ma- magic show for sure um do you guys want to talk about the, uh, the speaking of strange music at Tech Nine, the new artist that's been signed? I feel bad for him though. You know, he gets signed to Strange Music this week, and then his news story basically gets buried by the fact that everyone thinks his boss is dead. <laughs> <laughs> like how how much luck is that? His the, name is Maze. Who the hell's Maze? Uh, he, Maze yeah, exactly. One. And he just got signed to Strange Music this week, and Golf that's club. awesome. So I give him congrats. Golf club. Fucking hell yeah. And, uh, but yeah, and then everyone thinks his boss is dead, so no one's really talking about Maze 301. They're just like, took nine RIP. I wonder if anybody actually put like a wreath or something like on their, on their set headquarters. Flowers. You set flowers, not no, like this is before it said, like that it was known that it wasn't really him. You talked about draft season for yes. the music industry. Yes. Maze 301. That, that's like, Proof of that because this guy didn't have a huge following. This guy didn't have a major fan base. This guy hadn't even put out, I don't think, like a, like a big selling album. But Tech, Strange Music, somehow discovered this guy and said, We need him on our team. So that just feeds to what you're saying about the draft season. In 2018, I had actually come out and said, You know, it's draft season. Uh, the artists that are like really blowing up now are the ones that people are going to be paying attention to. So put out the best work that you can. You know, put on some of the best shows for those artists. And I've had a lot of pet peeves as far as music last year. I know you've got a list of pet peeves within the industry and artists that you like and don't like on a personal basis. I mean, it's not sometimes not even personal. Sometimes it's just on their art and that I just don't fuck with it. It's not so much on personal interests. It's like, I don't really like their music. I mean, they can be cool as fuck as a person, but just because I don't fuck with their music and stuff, like, I have friends friends that right. i don't really fuck with their music but i also have a lot of friends that i do fuck with their music and stuff like that and will promote them and will put them out there and try to link them in up in the stuff so, so it goes me, either way with me let me ask you this when it comes to promoting an artist though, like like maze 301 somebody promoted him in the right direction to get that kind of attention yeah i don't think that was just luck so what was, there's artists you work with that, are, that aren't discovered you're, yeah you're, yeah i actually uh, manage scrub central now oh it's awesome yeah I do it again. We they actually got a show coming up on uh, Friday, cut same day as the Art of War show show in uh, Columbus, Ohio, with Gods of Chaos. That's the AMB. Uh, well, we can plug that. It's outside of yeah, the market. Yeah, it's, yeah, in it's a, yeah, it's in Columbus. Yeah, uh, it's in Columbus. But uh, AMB, uh, it's be AMB. Uh, fucking oh, scum and insane poetry. M M M M F D. Make a, my motherfucking day. Thank Have you. you. Seen them live? Thank you. I can't. I think I could say that on live, can I? No, I said, have you seen them live? Yeah, I have. I saw them at Fright Fest before I got thrown the fuck out. <laughs> That's a different story in itself. But yeah, yeah, why don't we talk about Fright Fest? <laughs> yeah, right. I was drunk. I don't remember. I remember bits and pieces of Fright Fest. And I remember losing my fucking phone. But, uh, yeah, Fright Fest was fun for me. Uh, I just want to say, I just realized that we have gone, like, completely, may have gone off tempo, so there's probably images right now that don't match what we're talking about. That there's a potential for that, so we just wanted to address that to you guys that this is a completely different platform, and we're trying to keep up, and when you've got three people, it just leads into interesting we, discussions. So We just talk about different stuff, and yeah, we just, three friends getting together and hanging out. Without the beer. Yeah, without the beer. no, without the beer. I don't drink. Like I said, I smoke. I don't drink when I work. I have a fifth of rum so in the other room. Drink. You're insane, Bob. Fuck. It's not full. I just brought it with me because I wanted to. But... He's he's a child. All he has to do is smell it, and he's drunk. <laughs> I drank that half by myself, you know. But let's get Over into the course of a year. Let's get into the uh, into the news uh, from, from the surface. surface. Yeah, uh, up? Cardi B. Oh my God. Oh, oh my. so this this woman. Yeah, I'm gonna put my uh, pussy uh, cat high uh, on for this one. <laughs> there. Go continue. You've got Cardi B, and she's confirmed that she has quote robbed and used and abused men and she said i've never said i was proud of it never talked about it my music but that's saying that yes i did in fact do this and in the days of like you know harvey weinstein and kevin spacey and a lot of like these artists that have come out as well celebrities bill cosby kevin spacey that fucking got accused because i liked him before all that and i'm just like you gotta be fucking kidding me 
I love Kevin Spacey. I still to this day like in and what I liked about Kevin Spacey was he came out and apologized. He's like, I don't recall this, but he's like, I am terribly sorry. This was like twenty years ago. Not now, now that's something I want to bring up. Twenty years ago. And he still had to pay the price for that. And then you yeah. look at Cardi B, she's gonna get off scot free. I so wait a minute, she admits to drugging men. Which is basically like a Bill Cosby, right? That's, you know? oh, yeah, that's a Bill Cosby. So, I mean, is are there going to be charges brought about? I hope so. I mean, drugging anybody is immoral, illegal. I know. It's, it's bullshit. It really is. That's why there's no waters at this table, because I don't trust you folks. <laughs> I only drugged you once. Yeah, but then I woke up feeling so strange. And then you gave yeah. me a 50 milligram... Lollipop, which I do consider drugging. That is like, true. I did give him. Listen, dollars. fifty milligram lollipop is something I would give to my dog. Like, <laughs> like you're I mean, just, not really though. Please, Peta. I was like, just kidding. I don't know. But you you I'm just saying, don't have a high tolerance to THC. I don't, I've never drank with you, so I can't necessarily say about your alcohol. But as far as drugging stuff, would I let Cardi B drug me? I'm broke. She'd be disappointed. Hopefully, hopefully I get the draws before like she realizes that. She yeah. just roofed your dream. I think she'd be really disappointed if she ran through my wallet. <laughs> <laughs> but the other thing, too, is like she's like, yeah, and I abused men, too. And that's another thing that I find to be interesting is that we've got this. Uh, there's I, I can't stand this woman. I can't believe I'm bringing her up. But she said, what is the one thing that women fear? And she said that it was violence. You know, anger, then like anger put towards them, violence towards them. And she said, a man's biggest fear is ridicule. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, first off, I can't stand this woman, so I'm not even going to say her name on air. I will never give this woman press. I, Ooh, uh, I'm kind of curious who. I'll just say this. There was a cockroach that I saw in New Orleans that took a cigarette butt, brought it oh, down Cardi to the B. depths okay, of the earth. Okay, okay, I get it. It Go ahead. brought it back down to the depths of the earth. She, and I thought she... more of that cockroach. I thought more of that cockroach than I did of this woman that said this. And I will not say her name because I've already said her name twice already no i did not uh it's not cardi b but i i think very little cardi b as a matter of fact i wrote an article about how she is like the worst icon for females in, inside the industry and xxl magazine ce- celebrated them and i took it upon myself to say no this is incorrect you've got people like alicia keys who have won grammys and have won awards I and did alicia a keys. brilliant artist You've got people like even Rocky Wallace, who's got more merit and, and, and like more like quality to her as a person, as a human being, than somebody like Cardi B. And I feel like that these are the artists that should be paraded, but they're not. Because I feel like that the majority of the people that listen to this music are either lacking brain cells, like the people that, that say, oh, mumble rap is so poetic and beautiful, even though it's the same thing over and over again. They all sound the same. I can't tell the difference between blue face and trippy red. You know what I mean? And it's it's no again like you had said no insult on the person but of the music and while I might be insulting a lot of people out there, I feel like that Cardi B is much like uh, Takashi Six Nine where it's like the worst vile kind of human being that gets away with it. Like look at Takashi, he snitched, he gets out, and where nobody is he? is he still in jail or is he witness protection? <laughs> I don't think I haven't he... heard anything from him. So the what I've been hearing about Takashi Six Nine is that he's out. Takashi's not there. He's in Iowa somewhere. I I don't know, but but think of the days, man. Think of the days of Biggie, uh, Biggie and and Tupac. Right? Had either one of those guys snitched, they would have been dead long before when they had. And as a matter of fact, the last words that Pac ever said was when a cop asked who did it. Pac, who did it? His words were "fuck you," because he wouldn't give up. The, he saw who did it. It was Suge. I actually think I'm that I I don't know I think it was the Crips I think that it was killed one of their security guards or something. No, I think that it was the Crips that killed Pac, and I think that who killed uh, Biggie was uh, the guy who was security and a cop. Uh, yeah, yeah, Suge's people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Suge definitely had Biggie killed. That that's for sure. That uh, that's my opinion. But whatever. I don't know if Suge did it. Like, was anything to do with it? The guy could have done it on himself in the name of Death Row Records in the name. Uh, back to the Cardi B and stuff like that. Have you, obviously, gentlemen, have been in a gentleman's club before, correct? No. You, uh, I knew he was going to say that. A long time ago, obviously. You, you, I have been. Well, I, that wasn't at a club. That was house parties. I freelance stuff. You freelance stuff? It was you know, freelance campers. work. It was, it was freelance work. I, I I almost want to dig back into that. Anyway, like that. <laughs> don't leave your wallet. Don't don't drink. I don't know, man. She's she's a piece of shit. She's like Bill Cosby to me right now. 
Yeah, I agree. I I can't stand Cardi B and I, borderline I, R. Kelly. I I reference that in my notes as well. I'd say you look at like I said Harvey Weinstein. You look at R. R. Kelly and it's R. one Kelly, the man. same. What's bothering me right now is usually I harbor some strange feelings for Bobby Doe, but right now I just want to pet him. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. Pet myself. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, well, let's, 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 uh, move what on else do we have it from the surface? So, so oh. uh, Kanye West, uh, will, uh, his appearance on the Joe, Joe Rogan podcast is canceled. Uh, who knows why I didn't, I didn't, I deliberately didn't look into that, uh, for the hopes that that would be something that people could look into Kanye and discuss. Kanye West lost like all, like I remember his album college dropout and even I that, liked him when he first came out college dropout songs like through the wire and shit. Um, and then he became a Trump supporter. I mean, you know what? I don't, I don't even care, care who you support. Yeah, hold on, I, I, I just don't like the Cardi retarded. B, so I want to take this off. As far as like you support who you want, it doesn't necessarily make you racist. May make your judgment a little bit. You know, I might question, I might not leave like trust you with certain stuff or anything like that. But you know what? You could be a good person and still be a Trump supporter. It's the truth. I I get that, but the way that 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 Kanye had Kanye's the things insane. that he had, I know, but the things that he had said to support Trump and the way that he had it, it, like artists were saying, you know, he kind of like Why sold out who about he was. Political shit on my music show because it kind of branches into it. But no, anyway, I, I disagree. When, when, when it comes to the Kanye West, though, like even him for all the things and in, in intents and purposes. I'm not a fan of his music, not even the college dropout album. Like, I never you just dug said his you music. liked it. I liked some of the music that was on it, and I liked one of the music videos that played on MTV from that album. I feel like you lied to me. I probably did. <laughs> but uh, I wasn't the biggest fan of that album. Like, I'm, I'm saying it wasn't terrible. It was not the worst thing I had ever heard. But it wasn't the greatest. But as far as time goes, like, that was, like, at the height of everything where Kanye West was still kind of had it all together. Yeah, you know, for the most part, and then it, he kind of falls away into this, it, whatever it is that he's doing now. But canceling on, on the Joe Rogan podcast, I feel like that. I I personally feel like that that was Kanye West cowering out or being told to get off that podcast and not to be on there, and because the people that he is affiliated with, like closely affiliated with, pull strings like that. Joe Rogan is. Amazing, hilarious, yeah, absolutely like podcast gold. Like I've watched a good, like I just discovered his podcast. You watch his stand up, yeah. Oh, I've seen. The thing hilarious. is, I knew about his stand up way before I knew about his podcast. Like I, I never listened to it. I didn't really get into it. And then finally, my friend showed me the Jake the Snake episode. That was the first episode I watched through. It was like two, three hours long, and then I just got addicted and just like binged it for like two weeks of just like watching Joe Rogan podcast. Yeah, he's a brilliant man. I'm done. I'm actually caught up. <laughs> it's funny. Wow. It's a it's two years, two and a half years or something of, of uh, podcast. It might be more than that. Yeah, he he been doing it for a while. It's I like, like a thousand something. My one of my favorite so, ones uh, of the show was uh, Neil deGrasse Ty- uh, Tyson when he was talking about why he doesn't have a case for his cell phone. I thought that was brilliant. Billy Corgan's one was pretty funny on how he downplayed the whole Nirvana beef with him and stuff. He's like, I knew Nirvana people. Yeah. I don't like Billy Corgan. To each their own. Sorry. I like some of his music. Yeah, especially Bungets were a great groom. I think he's a POS. All right, so we had one more thing from News from the Surface. And it's a it's an artist. Goes by whatever, whatever, Doom. Who? Whatever, whatever. What? Yeah, I mean, he, it's, it's something like... in front of his name, but he, it's rapper Doom. And he had said that uh, he only raps for money. He doesn't do it because he likes it, and he even admitted that he does not listen to hip hop. I know a lot of people like that that are like real life like that. But uh, don't is say he it. considered a good rapper or whatever? Is he good? Uh, people seem to like his music. I I was more interested in the fact that there's somebody out there making music like that that's talking shit openly. I mean, there's a lot of rappers like that. They might not. Did that talk XX like X that. kid that the one the young kid who passed who got shot? Uh, didn't he say he was better than Pac or something at one point? Everybody <laughs> got on his ass about it. Like oh, uh, you're talking Lil Xan, right? Oh, he's talking about the tri- X, tri- yeah, Triple X, Fenty yeah, that guy. I don't think he said he was better than Pac. I'm pretty I, sure he did. I, I kind of uh, half-assed remember like people like crucifying him. 
people no see Lil Xan said that Tupac was boring. boring. Lil Xan fans were saying that he was the modern day Tupac. It wasn't him that came out and said that. See, one of the things I gotta say about Exentation is this. He was a very humble guy. Uh, if you've seen his interview with Adam Twenty Two, the guy was humble. The guy was, but he was also scared, man. Like he was like wearing his hood a certain way. Like he was like. Did you see Adam Twenty Two get a gun pulled on him? Yeah, he got robbed on his own live stream. That's yeah, crazy. are we safe here in this studio? Because yeah. I don't need to get robbed like Adam Twenty Two. I'm broke. Like I mean, they yeah, got my once bank again, card. just like Cardi B, they're yeah, gonna be very disappointed, they're disappointed going through my wallet. <laughs> I've got a ten dollar McDonald's gift card, so there's that. <laughs> I hope the Adam Twenty Two guy is not watching. He's coming for you, Sid. He wants his McDonald's. Wait, you've interviewed Adam Twenty Two, haven't you, or something like that? Or you uh, referenced him in something to me? I didn't know who the fuck he was. So one of the things with Adam Twenty Two is one, I don't like the, some of the artists that he promotes. Uh, Blueface. Matter of fact, my top ten uh, worst artists of all time came from Adam Twenty Two's show because he shined light onto them. I would have known who they were had I had not watched his show. And at least like four or five of the artists I put on that list are going through something, and it's hilarious. Uh, Lil Xan goes into rehab. Takashi Six Nine, who is the worst, ends up going to prison. Blueface ends up going through like his own thing. Well, I forget what it even was, but like it turned into like a Sid Jones top ten hit list, <laughs> which I thought was brilliant. I was like, that's great. But I respect Adam Twenty Two, and one of the things that made me back him as a as a podcast guy was this. Where'd you have his back the other day, then, man? When they're robbing him. Not there, you have some spirit. <laughs> but but uh and Rocks can vouch for me on this too. He was accused of sexually assaulting a one armed woman. I you gotta hand it to him. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. I no. <laughs> I don't like Adam twenty two's opinion in music, but I, I've heard of his lifestyle. He hangs out with a uh, <laughs> famous YouTuber Tana Mojo. He he's he's got the rock star lifestyle. It was his birthday party, he's hanging out. And now he's accused of sexually assaulting a one-armed woman. Now, oh, let me fuck put, him, then. He's look, accused of, like, sexual harassment of a one-armed chick. It went away real quick. I, I, I heard it was a real BS story. It was all consensual. Yeah, that's... that's I, yeah, whatever. I don't know. I don't listen to the guy. I just know he got robbed on, on a podcast, like, live or something. I thought it was a joke at first, and I realized. I was like, oh, shit, they really... Did you see that he had uh, ICP on his show, and he actually painted his face up for the I whole did thing? see that. I, I thought, man, I don't know if it was... And this is my personal opinion, a person outside looking in. It kind of seemed like they were, he was kind of, like, mocking him. No. It just... How do you know? Because you know in one yeah. my very first episode of Adam Twenty Two that I watched, I forget who he was interviewing, but he was wearing an, uh, an insane clown posse T shirt that was like from the cover of like a newspaper, or like a magazine or whatever. And he was just it was I like I said I don't even know who the artist was, so it was nothing from like the Juggle community or anything. But it was just an artist, and he was rocking that shirt. Do you Happy follow uh, his stuff? Because he just shared Ouija's new music video. Did he really? That's uh, it was on No Jumper. Yep, and and. Yeah, he dropped it on his uh, YouTube, but it was already at like 27,000 views. So that's nice. really awesome for Ouija <clears throat> Mac. Shout out to Ouija me. Mac. That's my boy. He's oh, yeah. awesome. Shout out to Ouija. That dude's always cool. I actually, Shout uh, out to DJ Chunk. DJ Ch Dude is fucking awesome. I hung out with him while I was doing stuff at uh, Juggalo Day, uh, Day 2 and stuff. Dude's fucking great. Funny guy. We were clowning. There's nothing else to fucking do when you stand there. You were clowned. I was clowned in between clown vs. merch thing. I I was gonna save this question for Razor Ray, but I'm gonna ask you guys here now that we oh, ta talked about pretty much everything that, that was on the notes. So I gotta ask. I've noticed that news from the underground is always more brighter than news from the surface. Like the news from the surface is always something negative about somebody. It's always something bad about somebody. Like I I, I feel like the, the the controversy that Eminem did back in the day, like the got him his album sales like when he was talking about his mom and things like that the music video cleaning out my closet like everybody dr phil oprah winfrey they were all talking about eminem and now in this day and age i feel like it's completely different that if you would say something like that it goes completely unnoticed i don't know eminem dropped a diss on fucking or mgk and then i mean that really wasn't unnoticed that was a pretty big beef Recently. No, that's not, that's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying, like, yeah, when MGK uh, called out Eminem, everybody was waiting for Eminem's response. Are you Eminem's saying that response. people are so I'm popular shocked, opinion. Rap Devil uh, is a better song. Worn out by the shock, yeah. They, like, they don't get shocked anymore, you know. Right, yeah. now it's Cardi B sexually assaulting men and women. Now it's, like, Kanye West canceling podcasts, and it's this one Wait, rapper saying, I don't even what? listen to hip-hop, and I only do rap for a career. 
Sometimes I don't understand Sid Jones. Why? Why do you care so much that he canceled this podcast? Actually, I wouldn't. You know what? I kind of care too. I'm gonna. I'm, you know what? I'm gonna play devil's advocate. Yes, yeah, so I'm going. I'm going to. I'm going in on for Fucking a sit on this. Joe me. Rogan's a good podcast. It's at least two hours long. We can listen to Kanye West babble for two hours about bullshit. That watch just Joe Rogan just fuck with them because you know that's what Joe Rogan does. That's what he did that. What's that one guy's conspiracy theorist? Uh, he's got his own. Alex ch- Jones. Yes. I watched that, and he had him on twice. And he literally, I watched the whole thing. It's Alex Jones talking most of the time for a good 70% of it. But all Rogan was doing was almost like baiting him into saying more stupid shit. And, like, I understand there's conspiracies out there, and I'm pretty sure Alex Jones hits on some of them that are right and stuff. But, uh, dude, he just watched him babble. And it was the greatest thing. That's why I wanted to see Kanye West on Joe Rogan, even though I didn't know he was going to be on until... He canceled. You lucky Bobby protected you, Sid. That's why I like Bobby Doe. The truth. Uh, <laughs> and there's only a guest. He only a not. guest. I'm only a guest. Just hanging out with these guys and stuff. I like, tried to get him involved with Rocks TV before, but he told me it was dangerous. It and was I didn't dangerous. Understand. I bring I bring heat on people that you know. My opinion, uh, man, it, it's it's unpopular as fuck, and I say what I want, and you know it is what it is. It's my opinion. It's shit happens so what's pissing you off lately no you know actually i've been positive lately honestly i really have you know i just moved back to michigan and stuff i was a, congratulations thank you very much i appreciate that uh we missed you i know you did you know i, I missed you guys too I just, how was columbus columbus was awesome and stuff i was kicking with gods of chaos and mr j rock and stuff mr j rock's got some new music's uh coming out soon uh, i like his art more than his music he's a really good visual artist man you We're can't. not not saying nothing against his music, but to me, I'm more fascinated by visual art. I, I'm oversaturated here in Detroit with the audio artists. No, I feel you. The guy, no, the guy's a lyrical genius. Stuff raps a lot of real shit, and uh, also Gods of Chaos are really got some stuff coming I don't know out. Enough. I know you don't, and that's why I need to teach you. I'm just glad that uh, I got to see some punk rock as well. I love hip hop. I have been hip hop the hell out as far as rap shows and everything else. So taking a break, going down to South by Southwest and hearing punk rock was Seen amazing. Something different. Yeah. Pleasure Fix did one of the best covers of Iggy Pop's "I Want to Be Your Dog" that I had ever heard in my life, and I was so into it. So it was since we're here privately in this room with nobody oh, else watching, God. I gotta tell you. That down in South by Southwest, Sid slept in the closet. Now, <laughs> that sounds crazy, but that's just a testament to how big this house was. The closet was like a perfect size hobbit room for Sid, and it was pretty amazing. I, I was I was definitely happy to have my own room. I didn't have to share it with anybody, so I got to have my closet. Oh, Casper's here. Look. Oh shit. Oh, this guy. I made it. Yeah. I'm alive. Oh God, what's your jersey? What is that? That oh, it's buckshot. Yeah. Buckshot always has fresh gear. Dude, it does everything's got is fresh. So his uh his merch dude, I ended up making friends with him. Because Do you keep we, on like, all right your bracelets? Like, yeah, I got forever. twenty eight right now. Yeah, I but no, I'm friends with merch guy Travis, and fucking he hooked me up with this, the jersey, and he gave me this fucking. I, I need you to do a review on this fucking album, dude. Why does your it's voice a, sound hoarse? Because I've been fucking. Wiling out all weekend. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. So go ahead. Proceed. Uh, Hell's Kitchen, fucking uh, buckshot and turncoat or some. I got it in the car, dude. This fucking album is sick. Turncoat dirty. Yes, thank you. That's Boondocks. I thought so. Yeah. <laughs> I'm special, fuck off. Anyways, this album is fucking nuts, dude. Like, so many of those tracks are sampled from old school fucking hip hop beats, but they murder that shit. I listened to it like seven times on the way here. It was fucking sick. I just want to say that I just got done saying that I got tired of hip hop and rap for a little bit, and I enjoyed listening to punk rock. This guy storms in at the exact hip hop. You got to hear this hip hop album. UJ, now. <laughs> no, I, it. I, I, I. We were talking earlier. I love Buckshot. I love his music. Uh, Alone with you is probably one of my favorite songs of all time that he had done next to Bully that he did with Kid Crusher. Uh, Helter Skelter, still to this day. Even the phone was like, because <laughs> it was a good album. Uh, Helter Skelter Deluxe Edition, uh, probably my favorite Buckshot album, and uh, I found out that he actually still has my review back when I was writing for Juggalo News way back in the day when that album came out. My first ever review, by the way. He said he still has that review, so that was dope to hear. That's pretty cool. 
Well, what happened to our buckshot interview, Mr. Casper? Uh, you would have to talk with the person that was setting all of that up, which was not me. There was another person that I was with all weekend, and I'm not going to drop any names. Thank you. Why are you going to be a dick? There's no I DJ team, Catnap. Sir. You got to pick it. Yeah, DJ Look. Catnap, which was funny as hell because I kept telling everybody, yo, he's going to sleep on you like the whole <laughs> fucking way. Because I had extra overdose was riding with me to make it a little more comfy for everybody. I'll tell you why. I called him out because if I would have fucked up and made that mistake, he'd have done the same damn thing. <laughs> so fuck DJ Dankish on that account. But I got love for the guy. I, I love his. I love what he does. I mean, the guy gets tired up, but he never ever gets to gripe at me again for being tired. <laughs> well, like it's just the timing just kept ended up getting all fucked up and fucked up. It was like set, and then something was up with the phone, and then it was set, and then he's like, "Oh, we'll do it at this point," and then it was set, and he'd be like, "Oh, we'll do it." Blah. Like it just. One after another, and then we fucking sat down with Damian Quinn for a minute, but we kept having some sort of technical difficulty issues with our mic. Nothing was working. There was no sound, and we all just got pissed off. Just, said, Fuck it, and we'll try this again at another time. I, I just gotta say, like when when you when you need tighter shots, tighter shots. I know. I already got I already got bitched at for my tighter shots. I know. I was standing, I was yeah, standing I'll, right I'll, there. I'll keep it loose sometimes. Like, whatever. Fuck off. They wanted the background, but I guess I didn't get. I'm not a photographer or a cameraman. That's why we got people for that. Because that's not me. I, I I talk to people. I don't sit behind the camera because he I talks sweat. and he drives things. Yeah, pretty much. That's about it. I feel you. Great driver though. He 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 <laughs> muscles through the night. What twenty seven no, hours? No, no. So the night before we left South by Southwest, I got three hours of sleep, and I got zero sleep the night before that, and then I drove for thirty hours straight. I'd like to thank Seventh Dimension for helping keep this guy awake with the kratom. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Uh, I can't wait it, to try their red veins. And uh, Carefree Foods for helping us get down to yes there the with the sandwiches. Uh, the fucking sandwiches were so bomb! Oh my god! And they god. might have picked up the bill for our lodging. So thank you, Carefree Foods, and Hallelujah. thank you, Party Masters, for the wonderful microphones that we used in South by Southwest. If not for you, we would have had a bunch of background noise while talking to Paul Wall and Bushwick Bill. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but instead, we heard them crystal clear. Yeah, and, we and we had tight we shots. And we had tight shots. Tight, tight shots. That's tight because shot. I wasn't behind the camera. And it was because, you know, Sid got to sleep in the closet like a good little hobbit. <laughs> we, we couldn't get Sid to come out the closet. No, no, Sid not Sid was at all. sitting in the closet. He won't come out the closet. Hey, Sleeping in the I closet. Put, I would have literally moved the dress with like TV. So <laughs> I locked you in that moment. I have wonderful luck on the road. Uh, when I went on the fuck the fuck off tour, uh, first night I was there. Fuck the fuck off, motherfucker tour. Sorry, I apologize. This I wasn't on difference. the fuck the fuck off tour. I was on the fuck the fuck off, motherfucker <laughs> tour. Anyway, and so the way it works is the crew all shares a room just for shitting and showering, and they sleep on the bus. So yeah. they say to us, "You guys can." Uh, Take a shower in there if you want. I'm like, yes. You know, we just been in the car a couple days. Yeah. I was in there for maybe 30 seconds and I slipped. Oh uh, shit! Grab the shower curtain. <laughs> oh no! Yeah, Bob, Bob, Bob fucked some shit. Some shit. Up. Ripped the <laughs> curtain rod out of the wall. The tiles. I was say, fuck the tiles down. up too. Didn't I, I just imagine a Chris Farley scene. This, <laughs> yes, honestly, uh, when I was back in dysfunctional family days, they used to call me Tommy Boy. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, um, uh, so this time we get down to South by Southwest, and I don't know if anybody else heard it. I know Dankish heard it, but the bed, like we had these two oh little God, beds. Oh, scared the fuck out of me, dude. <laughs> and it's one of those beds that like underneath the uh, the mattress and shit is just those millions of little wooden slots. Like Ikea bullshit. Yep. That's yeah. right. The ass so I'm laying there, and I hear like a car backfiring. Wow, these like the slot underneath me just broke. I wasn't doing anything. The crazy part is, is I got shot in my dream because of it. Like, yeah. It woke me the fuck up. Uh, so the bed broke on me, and I had to tell uh, Yorg, you know, and I felt so bad, but like I told Yorg how to spin that shit because I've learned this shit. You got a bitch. You got to kind of complain <laughs> yeah. to the people you're renting from. Otherwise, they're going to complain to you. That's yeah, it. oh, yeah, something yeah, easily. Breaks, for... You either complain and you don't pay for it, or you don't complain and you pay for it. For those that uh, are listening, he's referring to bed slats that came down. It That's what came they're down. Called. They freaking yeah, exploded. They snapped in half. Right? They, no, they, some they, of them they, didn't they snap. They were warped. They, they were warped. Now I am a big guy. I am a big guy. Three hundred seventy-five pounds and shit. I'm sorry. Huge bitch. <laughs> Skinny Lee. Skinny Lee. 
Why do they call me that? <laughs> because it's, it's the like exact fucking It's like calling a massive dude album. tiny. It's, it's, it's sure. whatever that word is. I, don't, it's, I know it's not oxymoron, but it's it, something it, like that. It's an uh, ironic name. I heard that ironic word, doesn't word, mean what whatever. everyone thinks it does, and like the whole Alanis Morissette s- song is really false. Yeah. Because it's not, like all her examples aren't really irony. Irony is more like a tone of voice. Is that true? What? Something, like something sarcasm. Like that. That's something Look it up. People you. argue about it all the time. <laughs> yeah, the fact that Alanis yeah, Morissette is wrong. You guys ever read articles on Cracked? Like cracked? Cr- cracked magazine oh, or whatever, like the they used to have that cracked dot com, right? That's they, what they, it is. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, man. Oh, I don't even man. know. What the fuck yeah, I've never heard cracked dot com is like the provider of articles to read while on the shitter. Uh, and they did like uh, skateboard videos that's of people like get for. crashed by cars and things like that. It's oh, great. Shit. Yeah, but so they, it was like fucked up shit dot com or something like that. Because fucked up shit dot com has some crazy. I know I saw your mom on there. Do you remember? Oh, do you remember oh, Rotten? Yeah, that was her debut album. Ouch! <laughs> <laughs> Try me, bitch! I'll fire it right back at you. <laughs> That's why I keep my guns in my holster because this guy could fire off cannons. I'm cool with uh, not tussling. I'm just glad that you're the one. That's yeah, Sid is very uh, peaceful, and when shit hits the fan, he like hops in my pocket <laughs> like a little mouse. He's like, first, me down. he's like flip the rat. Just first one the underneath the table in the bar fight. <laughs> Oh, I'm so, bringing my drink with me though. It's funny. He's my little I'd big brother. He's older me. than me, but he's like my little brother. He's he gets he, he gets cranky he's drinking, he's but we just get him little uh, Shirley Temples and shit. yeah, <laughs> we, 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 scored, we scored some We're Capri so Sun into a fucking I've cup. Four of these <laughs> right. guys just giggling, going like this. <laughs> <laughs> I, Ooh, I'm uh, wasted. I, Said placebo effect, buddy. Well, that's why I prefer uh, Jack Daniels and 7-Up, by the way, because you can actually enjoy the flavor of the alcohol while enjoying the carbonation and the citrus of 7-Up. Alcohol is usually disgusting. You're the it's only man I know that could get drunk off Bartles and James. What the fuck is that? <laughs> like some 3% wine yeah. coolers. <laughs> <laughs> actually, wine coolers give me headaches, so I don't drink them. Uh, do you need a Midol when you drink wine coolers? No, I... A Midol I, and a uh, Snickers. <laughs> no, I need hard liquor, actually. It's funny. Hard liquor doesn't give me hangovers. It's uh, light beers and coolers and things like that. Well, a friend of mine told me about the perfect drink for you. It's Capri Sun and vodka. I guess you just open up the Capri Sun pouch, squirt it into a glass, and pour some vodka on top of it. I was like, I know the perfect toddler that would be for. <laughs> His name is Sid Jones. <laughs> He sleeps in the closet. <laughs> sleeps in the closet. I begged him not to sleep in the closet. So wait, you just yourself. wanted it to yourself? Just wait, didn't you wake like, up with like Sid maybe cuddling you, you a... one night too? <laughs> this is not for like, the Did you ring. think like maybe you were going to bring a girl <laughs> back to the room and you wanted your little private space? You got your I own elbowed room. him like three times. Oh, oh you're talking about... The, the closet. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm trying to get the base out. Did you uh, think you were going to have a girl over? And no, like, so... Um, Rox is in the midst of breaking the bed and I'm like, <laughs> I'm not crashing on that. Casper and DJ Dankish were sharing a bed, and I was like, "Really? Oh, yeah. that was plot yeah, twist." Hey, we, we were foot to head most sure. of the time, yeah. and then most we threw a fucking stuff. blanket between us. I had my own pillow and blanket, so I just threw that over top of me while it's he went under the other blanket. You build a pillow wall. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's got to be this divider line. If not, you end up waking up with someone cuddling you. So I, I, I look around the room and I realize, wait a minute, if I slip on the floor, I'm getting stepped on. But there's room for me in this closet, I'll bet. So I open up the closet, this and I'm like, perfect. Closet. So I set up my laptop so I can fall asleep to listen to something. Dankish opens up the closet the next morning. He goes, what are you doing? I'm like, sleeping. He goes, I'll wait till you wake up, man. And to prove even more that you're a toddler, you have to fall asleep to TV. So he had Law & Order SVU play it on his laptop in the closet, <laughs> quiet as fuck, so he could go night-night. <laughs> What's funny about this is Sid's about to help dog sit at my house and my son clean the room so Sid can stay in there. And I told my <laughs> wife, I said, we got to move a TV in there because Sid can't sleep without the TV. <laughs> <laughs> Good news oh, is- I wish the race car bed was still in there. That'd be perfect. <laughs> He'd never leave. <laughs> Oh, he's gonna like this planets on the walls and shit. He's gonna be like, oh, it's like my little lullaby thing. <laughs> Sleep. It's a good Thank thing God. I have my own laptop so I can fall asleep to whatever I want to listen to, which is actually Forensic Files, not Law and Order. Oh, Forensic Files. Sorry. IDTV is where it's at, man. What is it? I listen to what podcasts you, when I sleep. Oh, yeah, ID Discovery. Well, it used to be oh. ID Discovery. Now it's just the ID channel, and it's just 24-7 of true crime. Didn't the guy just die? 
Oh yeah, yeah Peter Thompson uh, passed away actually two years the ago. The dude that does that creepy voice on Forensic Files. No, the one Peter, Peter Thompson. Thompson. Wait, Peter Thompson. Oh, yeah. really? He's dead? Yeah, he died. 93 years old, man. 93 years old. Really? He didn't sound that old. I, I know mean, he I guess did. That, this voice, that's that... Have you ever heard somebody's voice prior to like seeing them in person or anything like that? Like, yeah. like there's been a lot of instances. Like, I thought when I first heard Twisted, I thought Jamie was monoxide, monoxide was Jamie and stuff. As far as how they look, you know what uh, I mean? I, I what thought well, that mono was fat, yeah. like really fat. <laughs> I've seen, I've heard like a lot. I've seen a lot of DJs that you like see after hearing, and they're like just huge fat dudes like me and I'm like, oh, that's not how I pictured you. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty young know, and a real. light up helmet. One but... of my favorite silly, funny, fucked up voices has got to be this guy that, uh, uh, um, well, I, can't, I don't want to say his name exactly, but let's go look. Uh, it rhymes with Mama Shamemlin and he, he was out in New Jersey and this guy, he sounds <laughs> like when someone that I was with had heard him talk for the first time in person, they literally you fell to about the floor. No-No the Gamlin? Yes, that guy. <laughs> <laughs> they literally dropped down to the ground laughing their ass off because of how weird this kid sounds. His voice is just so high pitch and squeaky and it, it like has a little raspy. It literally sounds like a gremlin. So, you know, you know which one's the crazy one? If you guys have ever watched Archer, and then you see the, uh, the Pop, yes, the guy that's Pop's in the Arby's Burgers, commercials. Archer, yes, he's in the Arby's, Arby's commercials. When you see him in the Arby's commercial, you're like, what the fuck? Who is? <laughs> My wife's like, uh, that's not the. Yeah. Why do they have the Archer's voice on that guy? I'm like, that's that's that guy. Yeah, that's a real guy. Yeah, he does not look like you would expect him to look at all. But I will stick up for Arby's. They do have the meats. I don't for like sandwiches. Arby's. Have you noticed that they yeah. changed it? <laughs> they, they go, <laughs> <laughs> but the very really? end, they dropped for sandwiches in there because they, I don't know, someone brought a complaint or something, someone but they had, had to, to add that to Someone sandwich. had to show them the memes. There's no way that they don't see their memes. <laughs> that, that's why they Everybody did it. Everybody sees their own memes. I guarantee okay, that know. was a whole marketing ploy behind it. It was just, we have the meats. Dun, dun, dun. Whoop, flop it on the hey, table. Where did the magnet meme originate from? Like, what was it? Where did the that magnet? start? The... You talk about... Uh, Magnets, yeah. That yeah well, that's from, that from a word, from a song. That was from Bang Pow. Yeah, I they think did it was the song. Miracles. It's Miracles, they did the song, and then uh, Saturday Night Live busted on it, and then one other thing busted on it. I forgot what it was, and they like made a spoof. I think it might have been Lonely Island. Oh, no, that was the Saturday Night Live one and stuff, mm. and they kind of bust on it, and then it just literally just took the fuck off. and like, I don't know. How, look how many views uh, Miracle has. I bet you it's got like way, way over a million. Oh, it's yeah. definitely their highest one. Of their we highest. We only got like five ever. minutes left, so do we really? Wow, it's so sad. I'm hang out oh, with you longer. He just got here. Yeah. You should have fucking been here, dude. I've been not doing ninety since fucking Illinois. I dropped down. Oh, you to came 80. straight. Oh, you came straight. Where's your jacket at? I heard you got a real oh, cool jacket. Oh, Ed. Ed. Ed has it because Ed, I heard it might be a trailer. Be a trailer so. No, Bakelow and Histio have it. Uh, Bakelow and Histio grabbed it for me because, like, I wanted to cry. Dude. I didn't want to get the story twisted. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh. Uh, I, I wanted to cry though because that jacket. I realized I didn't have it after I had. Left what kind of jacket? What's the brand? I know it's expensive because where awesome, it came from. W a s s a m. Does it have J u like autograph or like a little initials on it? No, it's not autographed <laughs> or autographed or nothing like that. But it like, is like embroidered with like flame. Up the sleeves and on the back and shit. It's cool. I think I know which jacket you're Look talking about. Look at his mom about. soda pageant there. This jacket belongs to. <laughs> 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 right, right, right. Right. That's pretty cool. I'm gonna, that's pretty dope. Oh, speaking you're, of South by, check it out. It, it's actually tough. healing. It's just, I stabbed oh. the fuck out of myself <laughs> with my own knife while I was down in South by. Yeah. I was taking down our banner and our zip tie was up and uh, I like wedged my knife in oh, it no. and it slid down the blade or down we the bar. We told him he had to sleep in the hand. closet with Sid. He tried to hurt himself. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather go to the hospital and do that. I hear he cuddles people. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, keep on your fucking side of the bed, bro. <laughs> but did you like cuddle Bob or something? Sir? He did, and he I did. elbowed him like three really? times, and all he had to did, say wait, was, wait, "It wait, was wait. cool." Was it over your arms, or did he like reach in for like the belly lower rub? He thought he was a big spoon. I don't know. <laughs> He's not sure. I did not want to turn around and look. <laughs> <laughs> it would look like the lady that sat on her dog and is putting up lost posters when it's stuck in her ass cheeks. <laughs> I have no idea what he's talking about. I they do. That's why they're laughing about it. I can't. Were you drunk or just 
sleepy in the morning. Um, He's no, a toddler. So, no, so he hugged all the blankets, so at night I get cold easily. So you put <laughs> so, <big laughs> your fault. <laughs> I kept elbowing him, and he would go away and then come back. He's so warm, I must go back. <laughs> no, I'm, oh. But oh, when I woke fuck. up, I was on my own side, so I yeah, avoided him. That was why we kept there. him in the back in the van, because he, <laughs> he had his own side. seat back there. He couldn't cuddle anybody except for Tank. It's just DJ equipment. <laughs> okay, you said it's time to wrap it up, man. I, w- I just want to say uh, from myself, my independentness of Bobby Doe, the truth, independent, I would like to thank you guys for having me on your show. Yeah, thank it's you. been real. It's awesome. been real fun. Uh, always awesome. Always awesome. Always awesome. Oh, just fucking. Yeah, he's gonna leave you hanging and shit. I know. Yeah, you want to bitch about yesterday? Yeah, I know. Just not saying goodbye, just riling off, being a superstar. (gasps) How rude! He fucking rude as fuck. He is sometimes. I did. I was pissed. I was stoned and pissed. (laughs) (laughs) How? That's hard to do. Be stoned and pissed at the same time. We were at Tim's house, and I left without saying goodbye. No, because you know who he's with, Mister. You know. Oh, Mister Superstar. Yeah, Mister Superstar. Uh, it's kind of our job, man. Well, no, that's no, why I've been that super, out of not state. That superstar, the other superstar. Well, there's a couple of the fat, them now. The fat one. Oh, okay. The the okay, I got you. Superstar, superstar. <laughs> no, it's that fucking the one that smokes backwards. Oh, well, I I knew who the fuck you were talking about. So real quick, I do want to thank our sponsors again. Seventh Dimension out of Georgia with the awesome kratom they sent. To Did South they ever West. send any red vein yet? He's uh, he asked for the address. No, no. Oh, I can't do that. I want to try that. And right Party now. Masters out of Virginia for your wonderful audio equipment. Carefree Foods out of yes. Detroit for all your catering needs. And our most important sponsor, Broken Blanket Media. Without you guys, yeah, we these wouldn't guys be doing it. half the things that we do. So we want to thank you. Um, we're moving on up, people. We're going to be back next Wednesday at 420 to 520 to fucking talk about news from the underground, news from the surface. And whether or not Sid has come out of the closet. <laughs> I do uh, have a guest that is definitely interested in coming and hanging out with us again here at the studio. And uh, Bakelow. Uh, Bakelow is totally down to come and chill and hang out. And he could probably even bring his deal with him. I'm sure they'd both be down to come and chill and talk with us. I'd like some help from our viewers. Comment who you'd want to see on the show. Ooh, we'll try and reach out to them. Make it so that way they are here with us live for you guys. Because without you guys, we would not be here much like without Broken Blanket, we would not be here. I kind of feel like it's everybody else that kind of got us here. We just kind of had to show up. Uh, no, takes, we like, had to show love. That's and, what it was. And if it's a female guest, we'll do a betting square on how long till she puts a PPO out on Sid. <laughs> 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 at For least what, we'll know where to go. Wait, how, how, we're not even going to know where to go. Where are you at right now? <laughs> You're hiding somewhere in an undisclosed location, I think. We're going to be hard to find your victims. No, he went back home. Oh, did he go yeah, back home? Yeah, tail between I, the legs. I will say I am in an undisclosed location, but I will say back this home. is I, I will say this as well. I don't think I have to worry about that after the things that we learned about me at South by Southwest where I can't even you know. So we don't have to worry about that now, do we? You can't but, get it what? up? I, I they make Viagra. Yeah, I know they do. It works. But I got to talk to the women first before I can even get to that point of needing it. And That's that true. is why someone we're actually training has to give them a ch- we're someone teaching has to him. give them a So chance. now we don't we're need to worry about him. the PPOs. If you would have just manned up and rode the mechanical bull like I did, you wouldn't have had to talk to me. I did it, and I was sure. one-handed, bitch. What does your yeah, girlfriend look like? Uh, my ex-girlfriend, next. Well, I thought you said you're living with her. She's cute as fuck. I'm living in an undisclosed location, and I <laughs> am single. Technically. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. But she's much more attractive than you would think. And his balls are still on her purse. When you look at Sid, you're like... She must be like her. Her name must be Helda or something. <laughs> but no, <laughs> no, nope. no. Nope, she's a little cutie. We were all shocked. She got out of the car one day, and me and Bob were like, "No, that's not Sid's girlfriend." It's right, like, and it was a Lexus. So yeah, like, she's what? driving a fucking Lexus. Right, exactly. I do well for myself. He's a gold digger. <laughs> you whore. <laughs> You're a whore for Red Gordy and your girl. You silly little bitch. Yeah, why don't you go cuddle Red? <laughs> he already did. That was what the sleepover was about. They did that at Astro. <laughs> All right. Well, Gordy's next on his list. We ran out of time. No. no! I know. Gotta it go. Sucks. But tune in next Wednesday at 4:20. I won't be here because I'll be in the warm sunshine. I'll state. be here. But at least Sid and. This a-hole will be here. Whichever camera is working. I don't know. We got Jake for Art of War. Our homie Jake, so shout out to Jake for being there. Yes! Jake, Jake is coming. We yes! Got him. We got him. Uh-huh. And he's coming here next Wednesday, too. So. We're That's killing awesome. It. 
Oh, fucking, are you going to be going with us to shoot that video with X? Yes, I What's will the be there for that. I will be there for the X shoot, and we will be there for Hash Bash. We and we, oh, I can't wait for that. I'm riding with you guys for Hash Bash. Yeah? Yeah. Hell yeah. That's, that's, I got a lot of people. I got to give a ride to. Are you guys going to take wait, your wait, Care Bear wait, wait. cloud riding? card? There's one person that you bash? hang out with that I don't hang out with that I won't ride with. We'll discuss that off the air. Right, Thank you, right. people, for... Bye, everybody. Bye.